Celebrity Inn is a key piece of Cleveland history that shows the vivid and lively times of the 70s rock scene. It opened up for business in 1967 and quickly it became a great success. The previous owner had done a poor job managing the hotel's restaurant, so Jim Swingos took it over. He brought prosperity to the restaurant, named it Swingos Keg and Quarter, and before long, Jim had gained control of the entire hotel. The hotel got its reputation for hosting nearly every celebrity that visited Cleveland with the help of the Hannah Theater, which was right down the street. Often, actors at the theater would stay at the Swingos because of its small size and convenience, but actors weren't the only celebrities that stayed there. Elvis Presley was coming to town, and you know, he required a lot of security. So his advanced people came in to look over our hotel, and they liked the fact that we were small, there was an elevator, three exterior staircases. So in other words, with four people, they had the hotel locked down. So they didn't have to worry about the groupies and that type of thing. So they booked us and everything went very well. Then they began booking us. And as a matter of fact, we became their home away from now. Once Elvis had booked a room at the Swingos, everything fell in place. Many rock groups followed in Elvis' steps and booked rooms at the hotel, and before long, Swingos Celebrity Inn had developed a reputation as a place for celebrities to stay at while in Cleveland. The Led Zeppelin was a trip, <laughs> and The Who, and The Rolling Stones, and Wings, and Paul McCartney. I mean, we had them all. You name a group, but we had them. Probably more stories came out of Led Zeppelin than anybody, because they were just crazy. <laughs> They came to us from Chicago, that's where the, their previous performance was. And uh, the story is that they dismantled the grand piano and threw it out the window at the Chicago Hotel. <laughs> and they kidnapped the concierge and she started <laughs> traveling with them. And then they checked the airplane and, and John Bottom, and John Bottom was a trip. He was a drummer who eventually overdosed. Uh, at the same time, the Cleveland police were on what they call a, a, a blue strike. They were striking against the city for, I don't know what kind of reasons, but it left us in a position of having the hottest group in the, in the world staying with us with no security. <laughs> we're lucky enough we had a connection with the sheriff's department, and we got the uh, sheriff's deputies to give us the security. They were known for damage they did to a hotel. They traveled with an accountant who knew the cost of all kinds of hotel furnishings. We, we kept close count on everything. When they checked out, we had a bill ready for them, and I believe it was around 23000 a change. This, this, is just, you know, this is just room damages. Many famous athletes also stayed at the hotel. But one of the greatest sports stories was, was with the Boston Celtics. It was 2 o'clock in the morning, 2.30 in the morning, and their star center, his name was Dave Collins. He was a redhead, all-pro all center for the Celtics. He wants some beer, and it's 2.30. And the bartender said, I'm sorry, we can't, can't give you any beer after 2.30. So they got into it back and forth, arguing. And this bartender challenged Collins to a fight. And the bartender was no bigger than you are. <laughs> Collins was seven foot. <laughs> Collins took one step over the bar, bam, 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 we knocked the bartender out. <laughs> After this encounter, Jim fired his bartender because of the bartender's lack of common sense. However, the real reason for this decision was to avoid bad publicity for the hotel and for the Celtics, and to help Collins avoid criminal charges. Jim marketed his hotel with commercials like this. The personal attention and care of Jim Swingles and his staff. Intimate and elegant gourmet dining in the award-winning Keg and Quarter restaurant. Lunch and dinner selections of unusual American and continental dishes enhanced by an extensive wine list. Stop at the exciting new lounge, a great meeting place with a pleasant atmosphere, entertainment and dancing from 5 p.m. daily. The place to be for an evening downtown. 
Swingle's Playhouse Square at 18th and Euclid. The Swingers Hotel was also featured in the famous movie, Almost Famous. Today, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Museum, located on Lake Erie, continues Cleveland's rock and roll legacy with different exhibits featuring many famous rock groups and places where rock history lives. In fact, the Swingo Celebrity Inn is going to be inducted into the Rock Hall, where the memory of the hotel can live on for years to come, along with a documentary in its honor. During its years of operation, it had been called one of the world's best historically known rock and roll hotels to stay in. In his book Rock and Roll Hotels, Greg Simmons states that if there were an award for the hotel that had been privy to the most debauchery, the, uh, this Comfort Inn, formerly Swingo Celebrity Inn, would be a contender for the gong. Additionally, in 2014, when Alan Parsons was interviewed and was asked if he had any Cleveland memories to share, the first thing he said was, I remember the famous hotel called Swingo's. It's a day. 